Have you ever played a video game and like, I don't know, you always had all this extra money at the end of the game and the game just ended right then and there. There was no after story. There was no cool mechanic after you beat the game. And it's, it was just kind of empty after you beat the game, which is very unfortunate. Well, there's been many games in the past that had lots of little goodies that were sprinkled throughout the game that made the game a lot more enjoyable even if the story ended right then and there or that you couldn't go past that certain point in that story it just it just ended there it just seemed like games these days has a little bit more of like just hit it or quit it there was there's not that much extra love put in the game it's just like oh here's all the cool shit right up the front four gate you know you buy it with dlc or whatever um, but there's really not that much in the game where you have to unlock or that keeps you driving to play the game over and over again, unless it's an online game, which is just still not that as creative as it used to be. Well, today we're going to be talking about cool mechanics that were inside video games that really made the game feel whole and juicy, and some games that do it, and some games that need to probably do it a little bit more, even if they do do it. And let's get started. So... Let's first talk about that there's a lot of cool mechanics that games kind of miss out on that older games had that this older games in the same series had that's way better than the stuff they have in the game now. And a good example of this is Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, or I guess you could call it Sonic Adventure 2, depending on wh whatever game system you played it on. But um, the Chow Garden, the most honestly, is the best example of this. It made your rings feel like it mattered more than just your life. And it gave, it gave a like a continuously cool mechanic that made you keep on coming back after the, I guess it was like probably 10 hours of gameplay, even shorter than that, five hours. It made the five hours turn to a hundred hours and it made people's experience so much better. And people to this day still ask for this, but for some reason it's the one mechanic they don't bring back. And it just helps the replay value to have all these cool ass mechanics and all these damn little snippets and little easter eggs like how you unlock green hill zone after you get all the triple a ranks in Sonic adventure 2 or some other game pokemon they have a whole after game segment and it has all these extra little like like you know like items in pokemon that legendary pokemon you can't get or the ones you saw in the story that the story didn't allow you to get and it almost feels kind of sacrilegious because the new pokemon games while they still do this don't have the same exploration exploratory feel that the older games had like it just feels like when you get the new games like oh here's some extra story after you beat the game which is basically still the story it, it just after you beat the game now after probably is it i think it after since sun and moon and since omega ruby and alpha sapphire it just felt like the after story kind of felt like this tacked on and it just there was no extra thing to spend your money on and the currency didn't feel that it that didn't feel that special and your Pokemon you got didn't feel that special. It just felt like there was nothing cool about after the game. And uh, it's it's kind of sad this day and age that not many games do it. Because Breath of the Wild does this amazing. Like, it, it does it straight up just amazing. It's like you beat the game, you get a little bit of extra. And, you know, the DLC is there too. I mean, I, I don't like it when extra stuff is tacked on DLC. But it, they were working on it afterwards. So that's a different thing. And it still counts. But um, this Breath of the Wild has so much stuff you can do and you decided when you beat the game or you decided when you went all the extra stuff and some of the mechanics were always changing up depending on what armor you had on and it just made you feel like you should get every piece of armor even if the armor only had like a one like a one defense stat boost or something because everything just felt so smooth and so clean and a lot it feels like a lot of games are just like I, I, I love this series to death. But Kingdom Hearts is a good example of this. They, um, it just feels like you kind of get through it. And that's not Kingdom Hearts 3. A lot, of, a lot of the newer ones feel like this. You get through the game and it's just like, okay, now what? It just feels so, it feels like it, it just, I don't know. It just it's, it ends like a movie. And this is a video game, not a movie. You should feel more compelled to play a little bit more after you beat the game. And may, maybe if they go back to some of these game, system, game franchises, go back to the roots, they can get this idea of making a game feel like it's lasting longer or make a mechanic that makes you want to go back to the same stuff you've been doing so it doesn't feel like you're repeating the same thing over and over or you get more to do. Um, because it's a lot... It, it's even, even Ratchet & Clank does this well. It, you can even make your currency go farther or you can make your exploration go farther. Like, 
it, you can make your game feel like, yeah, this is the same stuff, but if you collect enough of this, you can get this cool mechanic that makes you get a jetpack in a medieval world or something like that, which I know people don't, it breaks immersion, but if you beat the game and you did all that, you know, it's something fun. Something fun instead of just going through the same rigmarole and just concentrate on the next game. Even even if the DLC had that, I, I don't care. I just want to have a little bit more oomph to my buck, you know? Not just like, oh, here's the game and here's the mechanics and or here's all this extra stuff, but you're going to have to collect everything to get it all. And it's kind of sad. But I think fighting games this day and age kind of kind of have that problem. It's like they, they're old school. They stuck in the old school formula, but how do you explain it? It's stuck in the old school formula, but they 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 don't make the extra seem that special. Like you get so caliber is a good example. You have all this armor and stuff, and like yeah, we got we get to pay for a few of the armor pieces in so caliber six at least. But then the rest of it's already unlocked, and it's like okay, here you go, here's everything. There's nothing extra, this the basics. And then we might add some DLC that you have to pay for later. Which I guess is okay, but it just makes you not feel like you like you wanna ever play by yourself. You just always wanna play online, might as well, because there's no reason to go get the rest of the armor. And I think that as you get as if you if you had items unlocked throughout the game as thing goes on, or you had some cool mechanic that the game just completely breaks the game or changes the way the game is played. I think that's some of the coolest moments in gaming. And especially when you watch people stream and you watch people play, it's just cool to see that like, wow, I could do triple black flips instead of do, I can't even do a backflip at all. And now I can do three backflips at once because of this one item that I put on my character. And I believe that these items should be well developed and well animated and, and it should be known to the player that you should be able to get them. And I believe it's something that's missing in a lot of games this day, this day and age, like I said before. And I, I, I really hope that developers start going back into this, sty this style of like putting Easter eggs into a big game in this industry where the, the industry is just getting bigger and bigger and people don't want to spend as much time on the individual games. But still, it's, that's what makes or breaks a game is all these extra mechanics and tools and not just having the base game in there. This, this, here's the mechanics and nothing else extra. Even Undertale does this, and everything, everything, everything works out. All the games I've talked about are big title games that people remember. That's because they do it right, even to this day. And I, I, I don't know, but hopefully, gaming continues to be more exploratory in their extras and everything else they do. This is Mark Salars signing out. And oh, also, if you like my content, leave me a thumbs up and or a thumbs down. Doesn't matter which one. This helps to know you guys are watching. Also, hit the subscribe button and that little bell icon to join the rebellion. And if you like this content, um, please tell me more because this is kind of off the cuff type of um, speech I used to do on my channel. And I'm kind of rough at it still, but I, I'm, I'm getting a lot better at it. I've been practicing. So if you guys like it, you know, tell me down in the comments. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Bye bye.